Um, I've, I can't justify what I did. I can't make excuses. So I'm not trying not to score. I'm not trying to play badly. Andre, we're, we're having a chat today for, for Club TV. People will think that the questions are going to be all the banal ones that uh, always get asked and the interview doesn't go anywhere. But we're going to get stuck in almost two-footed here. It's not been a great 12 months for you. Um, how do you feel right now? Um, surprisingly good. Um, people probably don't think so, just because I haven't been scoring and, and, and whatnot and playing as much as I would have liked. But... I feel like I'm in a good place, considering. In terms of what happened during the first lockdown with the five-a-side football match, when it should have been a maximum of six people at your house, and then the, then the second lockdown with the poker evening and a friend filming something on the phone, what does that make you feel like when you see some of the stuff the club's been doing with the NHS next door? Look, I'm, I'm nearly 30 years of age. I can, I can own up to my mistakes. Um, and I feel like I have done. I've made, I've made the mistake twice. It's stupid. Um, I'm not going to make excuses for it. I'm not going to hide behind anything. Um, I've made two mistakes. Um, and I have, to, I have to face up to it and, and, and be honest with myself. And at the end of the day, I broke the rules and I need to, to be a man and, 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 and take, take what came with that. So. Explain those situations. Um, well, obviously the first one was uh, was my birthday. Um, I invited a few people around, which then, including other people that invited other people and whatever, it became sort of a surprise birthday sort of thing. So yeah, obviously that that happened. We, I think we was in a bit of a stricter lockdown at the time as well. But ultimately, yeah, that's what it was. Um, have you owned it in your own mind, the, the, those mistakes? Have you, have you truly owned them, do you feel? Yeah, 100%, because I, at the end of the day, I know, I know I am human and I'm not the only person that has made these mistakes. Um, but, your, but your job but, comes with profile. No, of it? course, yeah, and of course. And that, that's the thing, I, I'm still always learning in, in, in terms of things like this and learning my responsibilities. But the lockdown rules so. were pretty clear, right? Yes, they were. And, then in the second lockdown, a, a, a poker night when households weren't meant to be mixing at all, that's probably more regretful, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've, I can't justify what I did. I can't make excuses and and, and say this, that, and the other um, because I'm I'm in a position of responsibility. Um, and I, I, I didn't show that. Um, so generally, all I, that's all I can do is, is apologise. I know you're on social media. Um, you, you say to us that you don't really look at social media, but as part of the roles within, within our communications team, we see what's written there. And uh, as you can probably guess, it's, it's not pretty. Um, they would, the, the people commenting there would would tend to think they've got justification in, in criticising, but it's, it's different between footballer and person, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, of course, and look, at the end of the day, you can, people can come on social media and batter you all they want, but this goes back to the conversation of they don't understand footballers and their mentality. Um, anyone who's playing wants to succeed whether it's for themselves, whether it's for the team, for their family or whatever. It's... So for me, for instance, I'm not trying not to score. I'm not trying to play badly or, or whatever. That is not my thought process at all. I want to succeed and, and, and if anything, prove everybody wrong. Um, so it's not, it doesn't help anybody with that. Well, you have to accept that you're going to get that sort of crit criticism, but it doesn't help at the same time, especially when you, you know deep down in your heart you, you are really trying and you, you're trying to put things right. But again, it is, it is social media. And I think the day I went public, it was the, probably the, 
the last day I should have ever jumped on social media because I, I never had this issue before of potentially coming across anything because my everything was private. Um, but I decided to make it public and I have to accept what, what comes with it at the same time. But look, if it, if it starts, gets to, it got to a point where it probably did start affecting me and you did see things that you couldn't avoid. And I just decided to just turn my comments off for people that I don't follow. It's just, it was as simple as that really. Um, because I don't, it's not important to me, social media isn't. And I think the day, if it did become that, then that would be an issue, but it, it isn't. And I can easily come off it if I, if I wanted to. So I just decided to, to just turn, turn the comments off and, and, you know, and just, I just haven't got time I'm not for any negative energy. I just, I just think if I've, for instance, if I've had a bad game, I, it hurts me a lot. And, it, and I won't stop thinking about it for another couple of days. So I, the last thing I need is being told it even more, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that's just the decision I decided to make and, and, and I'm better for it, so. There's a chance to address supporters here, really. What, what would you say to them? If they were sitting here now, you know, saying, well, it doesn't matter how many goals you score, Andre, I'm still going to think ill of you because of what you did. What, what, what would you say to them? Um, it's a tough question. I think um, I think I've always sort of had this mentality where I'm not bothered what people think and if they they like or dislike me because I know that the people that actually know me know me for who I am and know that the person that that the media might portray of me is actually not me. Um, and I, I hope to think that everyone in this room would say the same when it actually comes to me as a person. Um, I don't think someone would, has anything bad to say about me. Um, that's the way I've, I live my life. I'm not, I'm not a bad person. Um, I have been, but in general I've always been it, been respectful and, and, and whatnot. But I think it's hard to ever... I don't know, what do you say to, to fans? How do you make them like you as a person or whatever, because it's it's hard to I suppose, ever... there's, all, there, I suppose there's all different ways. There, there's people that have played hundreds of games and worn their heart on their sleeve every time. There's people that have scored goals, but off the pitch have actually been maybe in a bit a bit of a sort of dark character, but it hasn't mattered because of their goal record. So, uh, and, and I guess there's other people that have spoken in, in public a lot of the time. We, we, you know, as supporters, they don't hear from Andre Gray too often and we've left you alone because of this situation, but now's the chance really to, to, to put it on the line, I guess. Yeah, but I think at the same time, I think, again, like I said, people who know me know a lot of work that I do off the pitch. I don't promote anything that I do um, in terms it, with a lot of things that I do outside of football and stuff. I like to just, if I'm going to, if I'm donating to charity, if I'm trying to build a charity or whatever, I'll just keep it to myself. I think that's just, so I if there's been a few wrongs here, mm -hmm. then, then you know in your own heart that there's been some rights. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. But this is the football world we live in. Not everything gets gets spoken about. Mm -hmm. um, suppose they don't notice the issues that potentially happen off the pitch, sure. in and around the training ground, you, you've and spoken whatever. So, so eloquently about the matters of race and discrimination, mm -hmm. you've, you've you've committed your part, your body mm -hmm. to 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 reminding yourself mm -hmm. of the struggles that that people um, have had from different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, so you, are, I guess, you, from that point of view, you might come across in a different way, but you've you've you, you're quite learned in a way, and, and you've spoken so eloquently. So. That probably doesn't tally with people either. Yeah, of course. Um, but again, I, I, I don't know. Am I being? It's, it's difficult to put into words because it's. Am I being judged now by football or as a person? You know what I mean? Um, I guess you because, have to be judged as a footballer. Don't yeah, you? yeah, yeah, exactly. Because I think that, that's that, how it's. That's the profession. Of, and yeah. That's the profile that you. And have. I feel like that's what it's sort of coming down to. But at the end of the day, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a human being. Um, just because football's not going as well as I'd have liked doesn't make me a, a horrible person. You know what I mean? Um, again, no one sees every day on the training pitch and and and, and whatnot. Um, so 
Yeah, it's hard to actually put into words and try and make people... I've never lived my life to make people like me because I just feel like that's not the way you should so live your life, you know what I mean? So people know you, like mm -hmm. you, there's, a, there's some supporters out yeah. there that understand that perhaps you weren't played in a two up front at mm. the start and probably football wasn't played to suit you at Watford mm -hmm. initially. Mm. I mean, your goal record says one in two elsewhere, mm -hmm. one in two and a half, even better than one in two yeah. uh, early on. And now we're looking at sort of one in three starts if mm. we leave the sub appearances alone. Mm. It, is there more to come this season? What what, what can we expect? Look, I, that is what I'm working hard to do. Um, I haven't come here to to mess about and, and, and to just take my money and go home. That is not the person I am. I, I have been working hard. I've been trying to put the ball in the net. It just hasn't it hasn't been going at the, at the minute. Have you um, been trying too hard? Have you, have you got, maybe you I think... Like tense in matches or yeah, what? I think I have had that feeling at times. Um, and it grows over time, I think. I feel like I've, I've, I've played well in a lot of games. Um, it's just that end bit that Maybe I don't like to overthink things sometimes because I think you can you can look too deep into a lot of things. You um, said before when we've spoken to you, you're not the world's greatest football technician, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so don't expect too much outside the box. But yeah. the runs you've made, the defences you've stretched this season, if there were goals on the end of that, we'd be seeing a different guy already, wouldn't we? Yeah, of course, and I think I'd be judged completely differently as well. Um, as a person? Maybe, maybe, but maybe, possibly, yeah. But I think even as a footballer, um, look at, I can look at it two ways. I can look at it as if uh, I'm finished. This is, I'm just not the player I was before. But you or, don't look at life like that, do you? No, exactly. So then there's the other side. As I am still the player that has played in this league before and has won the league has won it as the, the best player in the league and as the top goal scorer. So, it what hasn't clicked. What, what are those memories that you can bring back for these mm. last 18, 19, 20 matches of the season? Well, I feel like the time from when the new manager came in and I, that first game against Norwich with, with, with Troy, I feel like that's I went back to what I was doing you look like those days. Like yeah. And I feel like the, the games that I have played since, I've... I've excelled in terms of overall play and, and, and getting the chances. I think if you look back throughout the season, I've had games where I've had three or four chances like on target, on, on, on goal. And the season that I was top goal scorer could end, probably ended up in two or three goals at the time. For some reason, it's just not happening now. But the only thing I've always done is, is keep going. I've, I, I keep going in. The, I keep getting in the box. I keep making the runs, and I keep trying. It's just not dropping for any for what reason. I don't know, but I suppose it's football at the same time. Luther Blissett is the club's all-time top scorer with 186 goals. He had a tabloid tag of Luther miss it because he used to get in so many goal-scoring positions through his work rate um, and ability to read defenders' lapses or latch on to a flick on from a from a strike partner. Do you understand perhaps how he made that work for him? Yeah, and I think he just had that stubborn mentality of you don't shy away from it. I think the way it's been going, I think it would have been easy for me to, to hide and, 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 and not make those sort of runs that I have been doing and, and getting in those sort of positions and trying to play that football of coming short and, and, and staying as far away from the goal as I possibly could. But I don't think I've been doing that because I've been trying to rectify it and, and, and trying to score and the only way for me to do that was to keep putting myself in, in goal scoring positions and, and I have been doing it. Everyone watches the games, there's some runs that you make that no one in the squad could make because of pace, because of just that ability to latch on to what you think might be happening but without the goals then would you say, do you feel that, you're, are you judging yourself harshly, never mind what anyone else might think? Yeah, I think I always judge myself harshly. I think I've always been like that. <clears throat> and I think because of my record before I came here that I know I, I am capable of doing it. So did that I, um, bring pressure, the price tag and the goals before? Did that bring pressure here with you? Um, 
No, I've, to be honest, I think this is probably the first time I've really felt pressure. So I is think it the it's first because time you haven't scored regularly. Yeah, I think so. I think even the seasons before, I've started less games and and, and still scored. Yeah, um, coming on a seven. Yeah, yeah, um, and I think. I just think it's weird. I think my, my my time here has just been so up and down, and I think every pre-season I've always came back fit, strong, and and ready to to push on. And for some reason, it just gets shot back down. Um, I think well, the that's first season. We haven't played too up front a lot, isn't it? In yeah, but I think game. yeah, but I think it's little things. So I think the second year I was here. Um, I think I scored six goals in pre-season, started me and Troy, and then I scored three and eight in the in the league, up until Troy got injured, I think, and then I got dropped, and then didn't get back in the team then until that was the year of the FA Cup run, so that was the super sub year. Um, and then the same thing happened the, the season after, as I think I scored seven in in pre-season that that year and started the first game and didn't. Didn't start the the second game after that. I got dropped straight away. So it's been a roller coaster. Um, but the toughest time of your career. Yeah, for sure. Career? Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. I think um, there's been a lot of obviously expectation from outside as well as within myself. So psychologically, it's been it's been tough, but. I've never, I've never give up. I've never had a day off here. I've, I've trained every day that I physically could, unless I was injured. Any time I have been injured, I've, I've, I've rushed myself back because I, I just, I hate being injured and, <clears throat> and I've just, like I said, I've never, I've never give up. I've, I've, and I've always tried to, to do my best, whether that's in, in training. And don't get me wrong, I've had bad days where my head is all over the place and, and but I've I've still gone out there. We've uh, we've touched on plenty of negatives. What's been the, the section of your Watford career that you've most enjoyed? What what period of time? Um I think it was that year with the FA Cup. I think um is the the first time I've probably felt really involved and, and, and had a had an impact on getting us to where we did. Um as much as the year was frustrating as well. There was some late league good. winners as well in the spring, yeah, yeah. spring as well, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly, yeah. And... yeah. So I would have to say that, yeah. Um, but yeah, you see, it's just been up and down. I think it, it is psychologically difficult when it is, when it is like that. Um, but again, it's, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to put it right. I, I want to succeed. It's, it, for anyone who would think that I don't care. I think it's maybe I'm in a position now where people are just looking for the negatives when they're watching instead of the positive side, maybe. And I don't know. I feel like I've always worked hard when I'm playing. Even if things are not going well, I'll always you run can look about. You awkward so and so at yeah. times, though, can't you, on the pitch? Yeah, of course. When it but, bounces off, yeah, of course. And that's, out and yeah. You can look mm -hmm. an awkward so and so. Hard, yeah. to, hard to love sometimes, maybe. Yeah, of course. But he's. I don't think you can dislike me for it. It's, it's, you know what I mean? That's that's the thing. But I feel like I've tidied that up now. I, I, w I probably will have games where it's not going like that. But it's a it's a confidence thing. It's not a because it's not something I've ever questioned until people started to question it. You know what I mean? Um, so and that goes back to perhaps being more tense than you. Yeah, 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 or, yeah. Exactly. So and so those those. Poor first mm -hmm. touches are exacerbated, if you like. Yeah, so, uh, exactly. So I think if you you see when I'm playing and I am confident in that, you don't see those sort of things. Um, and if you do, it might be just the, the once or More natural, whatever. one touch. Yeah, yeah. Get the shot off. Exactly, and I think I've played one season on my, on my own up front, like throughout the season. Mm. Obviously, I played it here, but not consistently. And where was um, that? At Brentford. Yeah. And it worked so, for me. Yeah, yeah. But obviously, since then, my better years were within a two. So with an that's Bagger alongside you, yeah, like Troy. Yeah. So are you always talking about playing alongside Troy? Yeah. Look, I've always enjoyed it. I think I'd love to know what the the stat would have been of 
the amount of times me and him pass it to each other within a game because I feel like we especially this season a lot we've linked up a lot and I think if I'm trying to think how many I think since the new managers come in we could have had 15 goals between us already and I think that's quite easy, easily as well that's just that's frustrating right yeah of course but I, I think if you if you go back to those games and the chances that could have went in even games where the keeper's just in the way or whatever and it just it's just not dropping um, on another day on you? another day yeah and if he was going well for us both we'd had 15 in the last seven or eight games and and, and we wouldn't be having this conversation probably but Right, transfer the deadline's point. done. We're talking to you as soon as we could after that. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're not going. Whether you might have thought about mm -hmm. maybe someone, you know, mm -hmm. taking you or, you or you asking to go, that's all done. So, what's your message now to supporters about the rest of the season and you? Um, I don't know how to put it. Um, Look, at the end of the day, I'm trying to put it right on the pitch. Um, there's nothing more that I want than is to get promoted again um, and be back in the Premier League. And and I want to, I want to play, and I want to score the goals to do that. That that is exactly why I get up every morning. This is why. I train every day and, 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 and train and try and play through little niggles and knocks that you get um, is to put that right and if it, me as a person I want to do it for myself personally before anything um, so I'm not out here to just collect my money and, and, and just have a free ride that's just not who I am and that's not I'm a man with 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 purpose and that my purpose is to, to succeed and that's what I want to do here and uh, the start of that is to to start scoring but most importantly is to is to, to win the league. Where are you going? Subscribe here first. <laughs>